Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earthen Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. Today I have a message for those of you who struggle with issues about obedience because of fear. And I, I want to talk about fear, and I want to talk about love. And hopefully we'll be able to to see the difference between seeking the things of this world and the things of our flesh and seeking to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. This is a very important message. So let's begin in Proverbs chapter 9 and let's read verses 10 and 11. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. You know, a lot of people confuse their earthly life, the things that they have right now, with the promises of Jesus Christ and the things that are eternal. We want to consider that a Christian is not of this world. Our kingdom is not of this world. And our king is not of this world. This world is ruled by the prince of darkness. And the systems of this world are under Satan's authority. As Christians, we are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and we are under God's authority and the things that we follow are things that are contained in his word. Now, we want to talk about this from the perspective of fear. So let's turn now to Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. And let's read here in Matthew chapter 10, starting in verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, the thing is, is that those of us who have walked in this world, we have become accustomed to being frightened of things that make us sick, that cause us physical pain, or even attachments to, to family members. The idea that losing the affection of those around us is something to fear. The thing is, though, that Jesus said, and we just read it, he said, don't fear those that can kill the body. But though fear him who, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, to be obedient because of being afraid of going into hell is the beginning of wisdom. But it, it's not the completion or the fruition of wisdom. Let's consider from the scripture. Let's go to 1 John, 1 John chapter 4. And let's read here in verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. So how can it be that the scripture tells us to fear God and keep his commandments, which is written throughout the Holy Bible, and at the same time says that perfect love casts out fear? How can this be? Well, the thing is, is that once a person's soul has been saved, by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. So their sins have been remitted 
by being baptized in Jesus' name, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Now, they don't need to fear hell as long as they continue in God's word. So Jesus said, if ye want to be my disciples, continue in my word. The thing is, though, that many people are yet walking out of Egypt and they're afraid. So they're afraid of things that pertain to their flesh. They're afraid of the rejection of their friends and family members. They're afraid of sickness, of death, of starvation, of war, these kinds of things. And perfect love casts out those fears because we have a promise. And the promise is that in the world we will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, Jesus says, I have overcome the world. You see, a Christian follows Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is our king, he's our master, he's our husband, he's our healer. And in particular, I want to address people who are afraid of giving up their pharmaceutical medications. And the thing is, is that there are many parts of that that seem very real because the pharmaceuticals create an imbalance in the system, whereby when you stop taking them, you will have severe symptoms, even possibly life-threatening system, uh, symptoms, pardon me, life-threatening symptoms if you stop partaking of these drugs. The thing is, though, that that's a temporary situation. And there are many things in the creation and dietary changes that we can make where we don't need to take poisons that have been created, that have been brought into being by men who serve the technology of the fallen angels. And these concoctions are in fact potions and an operation of sorcery. And many people think, oh, well, sorcery is only taking mind altering drugs. Well, let me assure you, all pharmaceuticals, all of them, are mind-altering. And if you want more on that, please contact me and I will give you a link about that topic. But the truth of the matter is that Christians don't go to witch doctors and they don't take potions prescribed to them in an operation of sorcery. This doesn't mean necessarily that we need to be sick and die. However, as a Christian, we need to remember to not fear death, but to fear God. Because if we, out of fear of death or fear of sickness, return to the witch doctors of Egypt or stay under their bondage, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. And this is very serious. We can read of this. And I've read this many times. If you've been familiar with this ch channel, you will know this. But I really want to emphasize to you that sorcery, the Greek word in, in sorcery is pharmakia. It's the same word that is on the sign of your drugstore. So when you go to pick up your medication, you go to the pharmacy. This is a Greek word. I'm not using Greek to interpret the Holy Bible. I am pointing out that in English-speaking countries, people are going to a building, a store, to purchase things that has a Greek word on the front of it that says pharmacy. And pharmacy is a Greek word that means sorcery. And the people and systems of this world have tricked people into thinking that this just is just a place where one goes to buy one's medicine. A Christian doesn't need to go to a witch doctor. As a matter of fact, if we go to a witch doctor, we are turning away from Jesus Christ, our physician, and turning back to Egypt. So let's read here in verse 8 of Revelation 21. Well, let's start in verse 7 just to get the idea here. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. 
and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. So it's necessary as a Christian to overcome. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. If you are a Christian and you're afraid of dying, that that is something that needs to change in your heart. Because this flesh is not what we want to preserve. What we want is to seek the eternal life that is in Jesus Christ. And we can read of this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And let's begin reading. Excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's read verses uh, 16 through 18. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So this flesh is temporary for everybody. Every single human being who lives in a fleshly body, that flesh is going to die. Whether you drop that flesh when Jesus Christ comes for his bride, or whether you drop it due to some sickness or death that is the normal part of human life at this time. It's the curse. It's the curse of having been born into Adam's race. And when we recognize that eternal life isn't eternal life of our flesh, it's eternal life of our spirit, of our soul, then we don't fear death because we know that it's going to happen. This shell is unimportant. Let's read on about this. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's begin in verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom. What inherits the kingdom is the eternal, the unseen, the invisible. And if we want to inherit eternal life with Jesus Christ, we must do as he did. And he laid down his life in obedience. And we have to be willing to do so also. You see, Americans and, and people in the West who are Christians have been deceived into thinking that the things are, of this world are the blessings of Jesus Christ, of God. So things like wealth, political power, physical health, long life, money, savings, success, are all things that people in the West think are manifestations of the blessings of Jesus Christ. But you see, God promised that he would provide for his people as they served him. When we seek first the kingdom of God, then those physical provisions are added unto us. But wealth and power and fame and all those things in this life are not promised to us. Rather, the opposite is what we can expect. We can expect to be persecuted, to be hated, to be rejected, to be reviled, to be tortured, to be persecuted, to be even killed for the word of God. And the thing is, Christians don't hold on to their flesh. They hold on to the things that are eternal. So I want to uh, turn now to Psalm 25. Let's read in Psalm 25. The Psalms are very comforting because here we can read the many promises for those who not only fear the Lord, but love him. And when we love him, we do what he says. And Jesus Christ did not tell people that it was okay to go to a sorcerer. He didn't say that it was okay to take potions. Rather, he is our healer. And the word of God says that Christians have the ability to lay hands on the sick and that they will recover. And that if we are sick, we seek prayer, prayer of the elders of the church, if, if that's available to us. But Jesus Christ is our physician, and he doesn't use Satan's systems to heal people. This is a great mistake that many people make. They think that, that Jesus Christ will bless your doctor, and, and maybe he will, but not in relation to your healing. Your healing doesn't need a pharmacist or a sorcerer to intervene, or even a surgeon. Your physical health can be restored by faith in Jesus Christ through prayer and through a healthy lifestyle, and particularly when we are serving him. So in Psalm 25 and verse 14, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. If we don't fear God, and instead we fear death, or we fe fear sickness, or we fear rejection, or we, fe we fear the systems of this world and what they can do to us, then we are subject to those things. We are subject through fear of death to serving something that ultimately will land us in the lake of fire because the fearful and the unbelieving do not enter the kingdom of God. They have an inheritance in the lake of fire. And while I'm, I would say that to feel fear for the almighty God is good, to fear men and to allow the things of this world or even death to frighten us, that that is to be subject to the evil systems of this world and to its king, and the king of this world right now is Satan. So we don't want to be subject to, to this world because of fear of death. And the secret of God is with those who fear him. Jesus said, don't fear those who can kill the body. 
Fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body and hell. Let's turn now to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And let's begin in verse 22. Seeing as ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of, of corruptible seed, but and corruptible seed meaning our flesh was born of Adam's seed. So we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. So this is what happens to all flesh. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by which, pardon me, this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. So eternal life is not of this world. This world is quickly passing away. The things of this world are corrupted. When we cling to them out of some mistaken idea that our flesh is what is important, we are missing the point of why Jesus Christ came. Because Jesus Christ came, the Son of God came, to manifest his Father unto the world, and that those who would believe on him could have everlasting life. And it's not about your flesh. It's about loving God and serving the Creator. This system is a temporary system, and it's made to determine the difference between those who love God and serve Him because they fear Him and love Him, or those who fear and serve the things of this world. That is why this whole existence is here, so that God can find those who truly love him and are willing to trust him even unto death. Finally, I want to go to Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. And let's read here verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. A Christian has faith in God and sees the things that are eternal and is willing to let their flesh fall away. And truly, a Christian denies their flesh every single day. So the flesh wants things. It wants to be given comforts. It wants to be given money. It wants to be given lots of friends and, and popularity and so on. A Christian is willing to give all of that up because they love God. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But the love of the Lord is the thing that guides us into that perfect hope of eternal life. Because we don't believe in Jesus Christ for nothing. We believe in him because he was resurrected. And when we are in him, buried with him in baptize, baptism, and risen again by the spirit of the living God dwelling within us, we don't fear death anymore. Rather, we recognize that our soul was redeemed from hell, and that we couldn't have done that by ourselves. It's because God loved us, and because he loved us first, now we love him. We believe him when he says that eternal life, the things that are eternal, are not seen, and corruption does not inherit incorruption. 
So we seek the things that are eternal, the word of God, faith in Jesus Christ, unfeigned love for the brethren, and to lay down our lives daily in service to our Creator who has us in his hand and is well able as he resurrected his son from death to resurrect us who are in him. I pray this message has been a blessing to you. Feel free to email me if you have questions or to comment in the comment section below. But I would urge you, if you have a personal situation, please email me because personal situations should not be discussed in a public comment section on a YouTube channel. I remain here for you, and I pray that this word goes forth and draws many people into recognizing the basic principles of being a Christian and how our investment is not in this flesh and or the things of this world. Our investment is in the eternal kingdom of Jesus Christ, which at this point we cannot see with our eyes. Amen.